I'm Eric Sanderson, and I'm a senior conservation ecologist in our global conservation program. What seemed important to me as a landscape ecologist was the freeways, the suburban sprawl, and the deforestation. And these were trends that are not, not limited to small areas. So I wanted to understand these patterns. I wanted to understand this sort of conceptual framework for thinking about nature in the world. And then I wanted to try and apply it. I've been working for almost 10 years now on a project called the Manahata Project to try and figure out what Manhattan Island was like the afternoon that Henry Hudson arrived, September 12, 1609. Manhattan was mostly forest, but forests of many different kinds. You would have seen a long wooded island with oak pine forests and oak hickory forests, and wetlands. You would have seen uh, streams coming down off of the Manhattan shore and draining across beaches. On, on Manahata, you would have seen lots and lots of wildlife. There were black bears, there were wolves, there were white-tailed deer, there were probably beavers on every stream, uh, river otters. Um, so you would have seen this very fertile, very ecologically complete place. If Manhattan existed as today as it did 400 years ago, we would think of it as a national park. It would be the, the Yosemite or the Yellowstone of the East Coast. Manahata started with some old maps, in particular this one great map, the British Headquarters map, that showed all of the original landscape of Manhattan as it was during the American Revolution in the 18th century. So when I saw the British Headquarters map, I thought, wow, what an amazing document, and, and what, a, what an untold resource for what the original island looked like. I thought if I could use these modern tools from landscape ecology and apply them to this old map from New York, that I could learn things about the landscape which we didn't know before. So through a lot of work and a lot of time, we were eventually able to geo-reference the map. That means we can locate any features on the British Headquarters map, and we can place them in the geography of the city today. Slowly we built up the soils, the hills and the streams, and then eventually what the Native Americans were doing, what the Lenape were doing in Manhattan. And once we had that map, then we started connecting that with lists of all the species that lived on Manhattan. So we compiled all the species that we could try and get a handle on, and we then tried to relate those species lists to Manhattan Island through a new kind of science that we call mirror webs. And that kind of data, it turns out that you can visualize and understand as a network, not unlike a social network, like what you have through, through Friendster or through MySpace. Finally, we took all these data sets and we used the kind of techniques that they use in Hollywood to recreate what the landscape looked like. We would take in the topography and we would lay on top of that the soil cover and the vegetation types and eventually the trees and build up the landscape from the bottom up. And because all this information is geo-referenced, it means that we can take a camera and point it out of any window on Manhattan Island and reconstruct exactly what that view was like 400 years ago. We can actually visualize a landscape that's lost and try and appreciate it in the context of the landscape as it is today. Whether you live in New York City today, or you're a tourist in New York, or maybe you just see New York on the movies, New York is, is a place that's owned by all of us. In that sense, the nature that underlies New York is also owned by all of us. I hope that the average person connects to nature. I think one of the things we've really lost in the 21st century is a connection to, to what nature is and, and our place in nature. We live in 2009. There's a million and a half people living on Manhattan. There's another million coming as, as workers every day. Can we make this place over the next 400 years as ecological as Manahata once was? Urbanization is a really important trend and it's something that we really need to come to grips with. Cities are really efficient places already. They have a very dense housing for humanity. We need to learn how to live in cities in a way that's ecologically efficient. And we also need to live in cities in a way that helps us take less resources from the world as a whole. Now, people often ask me, what's the point of Manahata? Is it just a historical curiosity? Manahata is having a lot of practical benefits to New York City today. It helps people that manage parks or wetlands understand what the kind of baseline ecology of these places are in a very specific way, and how human beings are interfering with those conditions in some ways. But I actually think it's, it's a lot more than that. I see us learning a lot more about, about how landscapes are put together and how human beings are influencing them. Even more important than that, how human beings can make different choices in a way that work not only for us, but for the wildlife and for the wild places that, that WCS is trying to conserve.